my name is Sean Fei. Um, I'm from BMT University. Uh, today I'm going to present Deep Intent, Learning Intentions for Online Advertising with Recurrent Neural Networks. This is joint work uh, with Ken Hao uh, and Rolf Fei from Microsoft and John Fei from BMT. So the motivation of this work is to bring deep learning into the area of information retrieval and on advertising. So in the uh, context of sponsored research ads, such as in BIN ads, uh, there is a need to rank ads given queries, which uh, leads us to learn effective representations for both queries and ads. Um, there's also a need to shorten tail queries to increase the ad selection density such that more ads are selected given shortened queries. Uh, this also puts need to identify important keywords in queries. So this, here is a bad example of how you can come up with a bad shortened query. So for this query, if we drop the word keyboard, it really totally changes uh, the intent and the subject of this query, which is actually a keyboard instead of a template. Uh, however, in this example, if we drop the, the word Microsoft, actually it doesn't affect the intent of this query. So this is what we consider a good example. Now let's talk about the model that we use. Sorry. Okay, so basically um, uh, the, model, the overview of the model uh, looks like, like this. On the left, there's a query, and on the right, there's add. So both queries and ads are represented as sequence words. So basically you look at, only look at the titles of the ads. And then we have a query and add encoder which encodes the sequence words into fixed length vectors with the same dimensionality. We then come up with some uh, similarity score between two vectors and uh, con construct loss function based on the similarities and click clocks. Now let's talk, let's talk about the structure of the encoders. So we, we know that the, uh, encode, the encode, encode structure for both query and as uh, share the same structure, so we we'll just only uh, talk about one of them. Um, here, here is what it looks like. Basically, it takes form of a deep neural network. So we talk about each uh, layer uh, step by step. So uh, the first layer is, is what we call the word embedding layer. So the words, the sequence words, are represented originally as one of k uh, hot encoding. Uh, then we come up with a dense uh, low dimensional vectors to reduce the dimensionality of the words. So the outcome of the word embedding layer will be a sequence words, uh, a sequence vectors with the same length as the word sequence. The next layer is the recurrent neural network layer. So for this layer, uh, um, we use we can use different various kinds of uh, RNNs architectures. For example, in this diagram, we show uh, an example where we use bidirectional RNNs. So RNs are uh, no, well known for their ability to model sequences. So in this context, it's very important that it serves, serves the purpose of modeling the context uh, around each local, uh, each word. Uh, so in this case, we can actually effectively take use of word orders. Um, and the outcome of the, the output of this neural network, uh, recurrent neural network layer will be another sequence vec vectors with the same length of the input sequence. As we mentioned that, uh, the desirable output of the encoder should be a fixed length vector, which doesn't, doesn't depend on the length of the input sequence. Uh, so there, uh, we need a, what we call the pooling layer to compress the sequence vectors to one single vector. And the model, specific model we use is what we call the attention-based pooling. So it takes the form as a linear combination of the vectors of each word location HT uh, weighted by uh, a scalar AT. So here we call the AT the attention. So intuitively, a good assignment or a good construction of AT should be in the way that important words, I'm sorry, important words are assigned with high attentions or high weights, and uh, non-important words are assigned with low weights. Also, obviously, this is not trivial, and the way we do this is that we let AT to be dependent on HT, which means we let AT to be decided by the semantics of the word. Uh, in order to do so, we introduce the, what we call the attention net, which takes input of a, of a, a vector uh, for each word location and output scalar. 
uh, and the scalars are then normalized into probability one. To be more specific, here is the uh, formulation of our tension-based pooling. So, base so uh, the input of this uh, tension-based pooling layer is a sequence of vectors, h1 up to ht. And the final output, which is a single vector h, is a linear combination of h ht weighted by at. And s is, is, is what we call the, the attention net, uh, which, in, which is implemented with the multi-layer neural network. And its output is then uh, normalized uh, into probability one. Now, of course, there are several uh, default choices which people usually use. And uh, in the context of RNNs, actually the default uh, selection will be using the just last hidden state, HT, uh, as the final uh, vector representation. And here we denote this as last plane to be consistent. And of course, you can also choose to use uh, global mean pooling, which means you just average all the, all the vectors. And um, additionally, you can use mass pooling, which is just take the maximum of each element of the vectors. Compared with those uh, choices, uh, our attention-based pooling method is, is adaptive because it, it looks at the semantic of the vector to decide the weight, and also it doesn't suffer from long-term dependency problem as the less plane does. And also more importantly, perhaps, it provides model interpretability, which we all show uh, more in later experiments. Here is the exam example of one of our trained model. Uh, and in the first row, it's, we, we show a query. And on, on the uh, last three, following three rows, we show top three return uh, um, as. Uh, we note that this query is selected from the validation set, which means that the model has never seen this query before. So first thing we notice is that the top three returned uh, uh, as actually of pretty good uh, high quality because they'll, they'll match uh, the intent of the query. And if you look at the blue bars, which are actually, which actually indicates uh, the intention scores or the importance of the words uh, given by the model, uh, we see that the attention scores uh, um, actually uh, correctly assigns uh, larger scores to important words. For example, in the, in, in the query, uh, this query is really about a bracelet, so that's why uh, the model assigns highest attention scores to that word. And the same uh, observation can be made on the queries. Uh, now we have, we have talked about uh, the encoding architectures, uh, which encodes both queries and uh, as into fixed vectors. Now let's talk about uh, how do we construct loss functions in order to learn all the parameters. So basically, we are, the data we use are click loss that are sampled from bin as. Um, so I'll remember that all the parameters we have from the model, including the word embeddings, the parameters of RNs, and the parameters of attention nets are all trained end-to-end. Uh, -end. And the last function we use uh, specifically looks like this. So for each uh, positive pair, which is a query and add pair that is clicked by users, we, we sample any negative ads that are not clicked by uh, that specific query. Then we construct this softmax-like soft uh, object function uh, uh, such that to minimize this loss, fun loss function uh, raises the score of the positive pairs and decreases the score of the negative pairs. And we can just uh, use back propagation to, and SGD to update our parameters. Uh, here is the experiment setting we used. So we sampled about five, uh, 15 million click loss from BNAS, which consists of about 6 million queries and 5 million ads. And the models we compare uh, have uh, are, are back, backwards, um, which doesn't really consider the word order. And we, we also try four different R variants, varying from recurrent neural network, which is one directional, and bidirectional recurrent neural network, and one directional LSTM, and bidirectional LSTM. We also try different uh, pooling methods, varying from mass pooling, last pooling, and attention-based pooling. In the first, in the first set of experiment, we use a um, manually labeled test set, uh, which basically consists of uh, query and ask pairs that are either relevant or irrelevant, and uh, report the, the quality of those uh, output uh, vector representations given by, uh, 
given by different models. I'm sorry. This, um, so, um, as, and the, the EUCs are reported in this, this graph. Uh, as you can see that for backwards RN and bidirectional uh, bi RN, using tension-based pulling uh, increases um, the AUC significantly compared to those uh, baselines, which are uh, mass pulling and last pulling. But for uh, one directional LSTM, using uh, a tension-based pulling actually degrades the AUC a little bit. And, and using attention-based pulling um, by the LSTM LTM um, matches the performance of the last pulling. And this is really curious because uh, it, it is that the behavior of the LSTM is not consistent with uh, RN. And why is the case? Uh, actually, this, uh, this diagram uh, shows why. If you, if you look at the tension scores assigned by the model on the LSTM, which is shown on the upper part of this diagram, we see that uh, the tensions tend to uh, be assigned and skewed to the right side of sentences, which means that uh, the model is really being lazy and the, the, the tension network is not correctly performing uh, credit assignment and it's just using, uh, tend to using um, last few hidden states of the LSTM. This is because the LSTM uh, is pretty good at uh, modeling long-term dependencies with a memory cell and so uh, and as we are using the one-dimensional uh, model, which naturally bias towards later states. However, if we uh, look at the, the tension scores for bidirectional LSTM, it doesn't have this uh, problem. Because if you, you force the model to be symmetric, it, it eliminates this possibility of, of bias. Oops. And in the second experiment, we explicitly take use of the attention scores learned by the model uh, to evaluate on the query rewrite task. So for this task, uh, we take long query and pick and, and shorten it into a uh, subquery with, uh, with length k. And we, we, the way we do it with the attention model is very uh, natural because we can just choose the top k words that are assigned with largest attention scores and using this, this words as uh, rewrite. As a comparison, we we'll compare it with two baseline models, which is partial drop, denoted as PD, and smart intent, uh, denoted as uh, SI, which are actually used in the BNS system. And we, uh, re we ask human judges uh, to uh, score those results of both attention, model, attention models and baselines, as we can see from this table that attention models actually outperform both two baselines with a margin. And in the third set of experiments, uh, we uh, take, take use of attention scores to come up with a modified BM25 metric. So BM25 is a well-known information retrieval metric that is widely used. And we observed that we can actually modify the term frequency part of BM25 uh, by in incorporating attention scores. So here is the modified uh, term frequency. And you can see that there's a lambda term, which is a value between 0 and 1, controlling the interpolation between uh, the original uh, frequency, uh, term frequency and tension. So when lambda is 0, uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's reduced to the original term frequency. And when lambda is 1, it fully uses the tension score as the uh, uh, term frequency. And so lambda can be, uh, can be chosen on the validation set uh, uh, but just cross validation, then uh, we report both uh, uh, optimal, uh, the, the result with optimal lambdas on the left, and when lambda is one, which means we use fully attention scores uh, as BM25. And we report the AUC on the same test set that we, we mentioned before. As we can see that using the uh, modified BM25 by attentions, uh, we can actually boot, boost uh, the performance of BM25 in most cases, except for LCM which is actually consistent with the previous observation here because the attention scores learned by LSTM is not really meaningful. And uh, so to conclude, um, we have presented a uh, deep intent which learns representations for queries and asks in honor advertising with RNNs. And uh, we explicitly perform term, term weighting with the attention network which is learned end to end. Uh, our deep net, uh, deep intent uh, enables diagnosing and understanding RNs with attention visualization, 
we can also utilize attention scores uh, for two information retrieval tasks, which is query writing and BM25. And that's it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, interesting, interesting talk. So I have a question about your attention net. Mm -hmm. So how do you train that? Are you manually, uh, you first assign manually attention score to train that neural net, uh, attention net? Okay, um, that's a good question. So basically it's trained end to end, which means uh, there's only one last function, which is here. And this last function is actually the function of the parameters of the attention network. So everything is trained by minimizing this objective function. So there's no other signals that we use for attention network. Okay. So what do you mean by negative yes. samples? Do you mean just samples that not clicked or something else? Yeah, just click clicks. Uh, click, click, mm -hmm. uh, clicks. Uh, and then sample the uh, queries that are not clicked as negative symbols. Yep. Uh, yeah, thanks for the talk, really mm -hmm. nice talk. Uh, I had a question about the uh, feature embeddings on the ad part. So uh, what kind of features goes into the RNN on the ad oh, side? Oh, it's just text actually, just text? the title of the ads. I see. Yes. Uh, so uh, do you have an intuition around how the temporal dynamics in this come into effect? Because ads is like a very uh, dynamic ecosystem, right? Campaigns launched like typically a week or something along I'm those I'm not sure I get a question. So you said ads are very dynamic or? Oh, uh, yes. Is there a, uh, how do your nets generalize uh, if you were to like not refresh your nets like in a week? What's the impact of time delay on this? Was, so what we did was we sampled uh, click loss from like a month worth. So the, the set of ads are actually fixed. It's, it's not dynamic, so it's just okay. evaluating against a fixed set of ads to select from. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker again.